no matter what side you sit on, so it's up to you guys, right? Um, we begin with our first worship song, our first hymn, hymn number 798. There are nine verses to this song. We're just going with four, okay? Oh, please write. say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, 
God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we pose for a moment of reflection both upon our lives and God's word and promises. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence in eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read together the intro it found on page 3 of our worship folder. Your word is a lamp to my feet, and a light to my path. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I entreat your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I think of my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. The fear of the Lord is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We continue on page 152 with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord.
pray together the collect of the day, beginning at the bottom of page 3? Let us pray. O Lord, grant us the Spirit to hear your word, and know the one thing needful, that by your word and spirit we may live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, while I bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham quickly went into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three sheaves of fine flour, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk in a calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from Colossians chapter 1. You, who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for, for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all the energy that he powerfully works within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for reading the Holy Gospel. <laughs> According to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Luke writes Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. 
But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mark Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 855. Uh, you'll figure this out. We sing verses 1 and then 9 and then 3 and 4. But it makes sense once you look at it. Jesus shows up. What do you do? <laughs> Did you notice in the, in the Old Testament lesson, God showed up at Abraham's tent, and somehow he knows this is God, and what does 99-year-old Abraham do? He tells his 90-year-old wife, quick, you got to make something. <laughs> you got to get to work. It's a little funny. And then he tells the young people, you got to uh, butcher a calf. 
and prepare this, but he is preparing something from the, for the Lord. He knows the Lord is in his presence, has come to his house. So Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up at your house. What do you do? This is a good question. Zacchaeus, remember uh, in uh, the story of Zacchaeus, he's watching up a tree and Jesus says, Zacchaeus, you got to come down. I'm going to your house today. Uh-oh, what do I do, right? What do we do? Do we say clean, 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 push a bunch of stuff under the bed so we won't see it? Do we cook, bake, brown it? Yeah. <laughs> Or do we say, you know, Jesus, maybe it's best if we go out, right? <laughs> Let's go someplace where they got a quiet room and we won't have to worry about cleaning up, right? Jesus comes. What do we do? What would you do if Jesus had said, you're next on my list to come to your house? They're all there. Jesus is teaching. Mary is listening. Martha is preparing. What's right and what's wrong? I should say that Jesus is not mad at Martha. And Jesus is not saying she's doing anything wrong. But as much as we know Jesus, that is how we will react if we find out that Jesus is coming to us. As much as we know Jesus, our actions will reflect that faith and that understanding. If we have no knowledge of Jesus, we may stand there in fright, saying, my house? If we have no knowledge of Jesus, we may not know how to act altogether, right? If we know Jesus and we say, oh no, what can I do? Jesus shows up, what do you do? That's the, that's the question that Martha is struggling with. She is wanting to do. She's wanting to do something. And really, that's not wrong, of course, right? We would want to serve. We would say, what can I get you? Is this thermostat set okay for you? Can I make it colder? What can I do for you? Do you, do you eat kosher still? <laughs> right? Uh, what can I do for you, Jesus? That's faith expressing itself and wanting to serve. This is actually a natural response for any of us when we find out that anybody that we care about or that is important uh, might be showing up at our place. We do something in response to that knowledge, right? We clean up. We say, what do I do? Or we say, what can I do that would even matter or be appropriate? If we found out that some of the highest dignitary that we could choose from any country would be coming to our place, we would say, what would be appropriate? And now we have the rabbi, the teacher, the Lord, the Son of God, the one who was present at creation. Is that our house? What do we do? And Martha wants to do everything. Martha wants to do it all and serve, and she's upset because Mary is there, and I'm working because I need help. Lord, right? Now she calls him Lord. She calls him Lord, the Lord, and says, make her help me. <laughs> I need her to help do now, we don't know why. Is it because she feels like she can't do it all herself? Is it because she feels like, let's just acknowledge that there might have been cultural norms, that the women should be working and the men should be listening? Does she feel like, if we get it all done, then I can sit at Jesus' feet too? We don't know exactly what her thoughts are, but she's upset. She's distracted by many things, it says. Her heart is not in this, or her heart is in some other idea. What can she do? But Mary wants to do nothing? Is that what Mary wants? <coughs> Actually, <coughs> excuse me, no. Mary does not want to do nothing. Mary wants to receive from the Lord. And this is what Jesus says is the one thing needful. That's a very good phrase to learn from the scriptures. 
What does the scripture say is the one thing needful? Jesus shows up at your house. What's the one thing you should do? And he says, Mary has chosen the better choice. First, be filled. First, receive. Jesus has come. Jesus teaches. Jesus preaches. He reads the word of God. Jesus forgives through his, uh, through his people. Jesus gives the sacraments. So we come and we receive the gifts of Jesus Christ. We hear the invitation for him to serve us, right? When a serviceman comes to our door, we kind of say, welcome, come on in, get right to work, right? Do the thing that you've been called to do here. Fix the thing, right? We don't realize that when Jesus comes, he comes to serve. He even said as much. The Son of Man comes not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. Jesus comes to be the one who serves, who fixes. Jesus comes to be the one who does the dying, not us. Jesus comes to be the one who makes the sacrifice so that we can be served, so that he can serve us with life and forgiveness and salvation. Jesus, the Son of Man, came not to be the one who is served, like feed me grapes, says great Caesar. No, no. Jesus comes to say, I'm here to do my work for your good. For your good and for your life. So he goes to the cross. And so this day, at whether he's before the cross, he's with Mary and Martha, he's teaching, and the disciples, including Mary, get to sit at Jesus' feet. And it's not wrong that Martha wants to serve. But Jesus says, the, the better portion is to sit at Jesus' feet first. To receive from God. Scripture will tell us, we love because he has first loved us. Let Jesus love you. Let Jesus give you his word. Let Jesus give you his sacrament. Let Jesus be there for you. We so often want to find a way to say, I'm, I'm busy, I'm, I'm terribly busy. I just can't make time for, for church. I, I just can't make time for prayer, personal devotion. Helping my family grow in devotions. I'm busy, Lord. I've got things to do. And when I'm done, then I'll make time for you with whatever is left over. The Son of Man came not to be served or ignored, but came to serve us and to give his life and to give his word for us. So also the word of God, because Jesus is still coming to us and coming into our house, coming into our day and our time through the word of God. It serves you. The word of God, the scriptures, they comfort you. They promise you. They instruct you. They admonish you maybe when you need to be admonished or reproved or rebuked. And they say, that's not cool, is it? What you're doing that's a sin. And the scriptures will also assure you of your forgiveness through a loving God. Let Jesus serve you. Understand when Jesus says the one thing needful, he is saying the word of God for you. For you. He gives it. He wants it to be there for you. It is there for you here in worship and every day at home. And by the way, if you tell me I don't have a Bible, I'll get one for you, okay? And I'll build a church. <laughs> um, and if you say my friend needs a Bible, I'll help you get one for him or her. And if you say, well, I can't read, well, we'll figure something out. There's podcasts, right? There's Bible apps. 
you say, I don't know where to start. That's a great question to ask me. Because the word of God is there for you. And I'd be happy to help anyone get started or figure out how to restart or figure out where we could look to say this is a good book to walk into the scriptures and get to know the rest of it. Because the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And he gives his word for you. It's the one thing needful in our lives. Before anything else, we need Jesus. And he comes to us in his word. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue on page, uh, excuse me, uh, page 159 with the uh, Confession of Faith through the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. We confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Lord God, you have made your word fully known in the person of your Son and in the proclamation of his gospel. Bring many into the communion of your church to share the riches he has won for us in his death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray you give wisdom and patience to all in authority. Let them serve with integrity, always for the benefit of those under their leadership, to the maintenance of righteousness and to the hindrance and punishment of wickedness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord God, we pray that you would sustain all who suffer among us and with sickness or other distraction. We pray that you would be with Kay, Winston, Donna, David, and Bonnie, with Robin, Kim, Caitlin, Robert, and Brian, with Elmer, Christine, Brad, Jim, and Noah, with Mike, Loretta, Peggy, Lois, and Christine, with Judy, Lisa, David, Barbara, Isabel, and with Roma. Give them the same spirit you gave to your servant Paul, that they may endure in their holy faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given, you have forgiven our sins and delivered us from death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to pour out your mercy upon us and grant to us all good things needful to this body and life, and keep from us all things harmful. From you and through you and to you are all things, O Lord, Holy Father, mighty God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit is one Lord, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated now as we receive the offering.
referencing the offertory on page that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting, Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, 
drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do in remembrance of me. This do as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
to life everlasting. We part now in his peace. Amen.
the Lord on page 164.
again, good morning. Welcome to Christ the King Lutheran Church. I know you can tell I'm struggling with something, so I won't talk too much. Uh, but we do have an unwritten policy here that if you want us to sing happy birthday to someone, I have to do it. And I understand that someone has a birthday this week, right? Sue Ann does. Now, I, I got curious. It's, a, it's not really kosher, but I asked her how old she was. 39. Okay, it's it's kind of amazing. Her grandkids are almost as old as her, so it's it's pretty neat. So, all right, so it has been requested. So let us sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Anne. Happy birthday to you. And we have cake. So, so we invite you to stay for everyone's, uh, for the cake, for the goodies, and for the fellowship of one another. Uh, I'm just going to run away. You don't have to shake my hand. God's blessings on your day and your week. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 